Hello, hello. There we go. Hello, and thank you for listening to Inspiring Hope. I am your host, Lois Herman, and I hope to inspire you with positive messages and help you to navigate the stress of your world at this time of great disruption. When we focus our thoughts and energies on what is good in our lives, we create positive shifts that cause us to be more protective, more productive, and peaceful. As we lift our energy, we empower everyone around us. If we each do what we can to make small shifts in awareness, from kindness to healthy habits and simple happiness, we create ripples of hope. Join us as catalysts for positive change for our families, our communities, and our world at large. I hope you are inspired by today's show and welcome. I hope you're holding up in this time of extreme distress. This time of world crisis with the COVID-19 virus. Some of us have survived extreme trauma in the past. Others have only watched it in movies or through video games. This time of global trauma is very real. This microscopic bug has stopped us humans in our tracks given us reason to pause, to take notice, to slow down, to wake up. Right now, pause with me, take a moment, and breathe. Put down what you're doing for this moment, unless of course you're driving. Take a gentle breath deep into your belly, hold it for a few seconds, and as you exhale, relax. Inhale peace deep into your belly and exhale relaxation. Relax your shoulders, your neck, your jaw and your face. You can even breathe like this while you're driving. It's a good thing. Take some of that stress down. Take a moment anytime you start to feel stressed and just breathe. Notice the muscle in your body that is the most tensed and breathe into it and pay attention. Ask your body what it needs for you to do and if you listen quietly it will tell you. What is it telling you? It's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. Invite your imagination to take you to your favorite place in nature. It could be the beach with gently rolling waves, the mountains with amazing vistas of green, or a summer garden with glorious flowers in bloom. Notice how simple it is for you to calm your mind. This virus is giving us a wake-up call. We are at a crossroads. The actions we take now and how we handle this crisis will affect our future. It is necessary to shift the enormous amount of negativity and stress in today's world to a more positive state of awareness and being in order to sail through this challenge. Some people are on the front lines, out there amidst the danger of this invisible enemy helping others through this critical time. As a retired medical professional, I've worked the emergency room at major trauma centers and managed large teams of staff through times of crisis. I have seen firsthand numerous deaths from car accidents, drownings, fires, diseases, gunshot wounds, and other types of wounds. I've been to the morgue to assist with probable cause of death. I've even had children die in my arms while their parents wailed in agony. Hundreds of times I've assisted with sharing painful diagnosis of fetal death, cancer, or other debilitating disease. And it was never easy. It was emotionally draining and intensely painful. 
Many in the line of fire are risking their lives to help us stay safe. They could use some positive energy and prayers for protection, health, and safekeeping. From hospital staff to EMTs to firefighters and police and military personnel, all the people who work with trauma operate on autopilot to do what they've been trained to do. At times of increased stress, their skilled subconscious mind takes over and they respond from a place of automatic inner knowing. These professionals understand the process of focusing on the situation at hand, the patient or person right in front of them. They take action based on their training, instinct, and intuition. Now, they already have used isolation procedures. The public is now only being taught. They use these procedures as easily as we put on our shoes when we go outside. In their area of expertise, what these first responders do to assist others becomes second nature, often at their own expense. They work tirelessly to help others to the point of exhaustion. Once their shift is finished, and right now, many are working long hours, they transition quickly into their second job, the one of parent, spouse, homemaker, family maker, and friend. These warriors often stuff the horrific experience of their day and move on as if nothing happened, when really all they want to do is collapse. This is why so many of our first responders deal with emotional issues often resulting in PTSD or even high rates of suicide. In this time of extreme crisis, our frontline professionals need our assistance. They need to give themselves permission to unwind, express themselves to someone who will listen from their heart and be taken care of themselves. At this critical time, we must take measures to care for our caregivers. I am ever grateful for these unsung heroes who are willing to put themselves, their lives, on the line to assist the public. These champions are on the front lines of this invisible disease, doing their best to keep everyone else alive. They are operating with limited resources, limited time, and limited assistance. Some are rationed one mask a day. This is like giving one bullet to a soldier in the onslaught of battle. They are exhausted, frustrated, and scared. You are listening to Inspiring Hope with Lois Herman at WSMN 1590. So we have our first line defense people and then there are many others who are experiencing the opposite situation, those who are doing their part by staying home to avoid the spread of this debilitating disease. Many are out of work and are also scared in a different way for different reasons. They're used to being busy. They're bored, frustrated, and worried about their financial future. These people often fall victim to watching too much news or social posts and they sink into the abyss of fear. When people have too much time on their hands, they end up in the mode of rumination which exacerbates fear. Yes, there is great uncertainty, but fear creates panic states which are counterproductive and often destructive. We must find ways to entertain ourselves and be productive as we are sequestered in the safety of our warm, comfortable homes. Nelson Mandela once said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. And then there are the defiant ones who are ignoring the cautions given by our leaders and medical advisors. 
They are still going out and about, potentially exposing others to this disease. Some have hoarded much-needed supplies that could save lives just to selfishly profit. These indifferent ones are the most dangerous. These ignorant people think only of themselves and don't realize they are potentially killing other people with their attitude of entitlement and defiance. How we handle this critical situation will determine what our ultimate outcome will be individually and as a global community. During World War II, many people volunteered their services to the war effort, since it is important to practice social distancing with COVID-19. What we can do to assist our comrades on the front lines who are battling this disease, as well as those who are struggling with the feeling of being imprisoned, especially the elderly and the young mothers, what can we do? If you are homebound and have a loved one on the front lines, cook for them, take care of them, rub their neck or feet, be present for them. They may not verbalize it, but they are experiencing crisis firsthand and need someone to nurture them. Instead of falling into the habit of complaining, blaming, or shaming, which contributes to negativity and fear, take an action to do what you can in this global war on disease. Many are praying, sending Reiki, and offering positive energy. Counselors are available online for people to reach out to. Email me for a list of people I trust. Lois at LoisHerman.com There are calming meditations to listen to online and other online groups who are gathering to stay connected. We can use technology to our advantage during this situation. Zoom or Skype are useful tools to keep a virtual connection between family and friends. At this time, I offer Zoom sessions for clients to shift their fears and habits to be more positive and productive. You can schedule a session easily on the contact page of my website, LoisHerman with two N's, dot com. You are listening to Inspiring Hope with Lois Herman at WSMN 1590. This virus that has gone viral is causing us to get back to basics, to what really matters. Avoid getting immersed in too much negative news, murderous movies, or even death-focused video games. These only feed the frenzy. Those who are stuck at home could offer to make some masks some gowns, or even some hand sanitizer. Maybe you arrange to prepare meals for your neighbor and leave a box at their door. This is a simple small sample of ideas. There are many people doing what they can to assist. What are you doing to help your neighbor? Please have patience with one another. Everyone is doing the best they can to navigate through these uncharted waters. As I'm sharing these radio shows, I'm reminded of a time in the 60s when, as a child, I lived in military housing in Germany. The only TV available was in German. I vaguely remember Lassie dubbed in German. It was kind of strange. However, we did have the radio with one American station. There were some nights my dad would listen to football replays. Other nights, we would gather around the radio and listen to talk shows. My favorite was The Shadow, a great mystery show that stimulated much imagination. Other nights, we pulled out board games and played a game together after dinner. My favorite was Clue, and personally, I felt Monopoly was annoyingly long. So do I detect a theme of mystery solving here, even from the early stages of my life? There is much we can do to occupy ourselves and our families while confined to the comfort of our homes. They say when fishermen can't go to sea, they mend their nets. What are you doing to mend what you need to do in your life? We know it's important to stay safe, to say 
Stay safe. Say that several times. Yet, what is causing the most distress is the great uncertainty, the worry about what will be, the fear of the unknown. If you are at home with time on your hands, take this time for introspection, to reflect on the origin of fear in your life. Release it, let it go, be in this moment, and embrace all that is good around you. Take on some projects that stimulate creativity, spend time with family, and some quality time alone in deep reflection. This time of extreme uncertainty is very real. Yet have you stopped to ponder the deeper meaning of why this may be happening and what you could do as an individual to help make a difference? You are listening to Inspiring Hope with Lois Herman at WSMN 1590. So, who am I and why am I doing these radio shows? As a retired medical professional, I have seen extreme trauma. As a department manager, I was involved in the acquisition of the latest technologies. As a corporate director, I supported staff in crisis. And as a systems designer, traveled the world, experiencing medical care in many countries. Some more advanced than others in ways of how they practice medicine. I have to say one of the countries I was most impressed with was Taiwan. In the late 90s, I spent the equivalent of one month at Veterans General Hospital in Taipei, developing software to detect capillary flow for ultrasound diagnosis. What I was most impressed with was once a disease was diagnosed with highly advanced methodology, patients were sent down the hall to be treated by Eastern medicine doctors who used complementary procedures like acupuncture, nutritional supplements, and herbal treatments. In one particular case, we diagnosed a large renal tumor, a tumor in the kidney, in a patient who would have been subjected to extensive testing and surgery in America. Here, he was sent to the Chinese medicine doctor on the same floor of the hospital we were in. I was informed months later by the medical chief that the tumor resolved completely. I was so impressed with their east-west model of medicine that I became very interested in how I could combine my western medical background with my passion for mind-body-spirit healing. I'm even wondering with this COVID-19 disease how much Eastern medicine therapies have contributed to the healing of the people in China and Korea who now have it in more control than other countries. A board-certified hypnotist, I learned hypnosis in the mid-90s to help myself and my children recover from intense personal drama. Twenty-five years later, I now help people to find peace of mind in all situations, especially assisting to lower stress, stay calm, focused, and improve sleep. I am currently seeing clients via Zoom, and you can schedule an appointment on my website, loisherman.com. You can also find numerous free resources, prior radio shows, webinars, and centering exercises on my YouTube channel. You can get there by just pushing the button on my home page of my website, and please, please subscribe. You are listening to Inspiring Hope with Lois Herman at WSMN 1590. Well, over the years as a hypnotist, I learned to help people connect with their inner wisdom, their wise mind, their higher power, their loved ones, angels, and even ascended masters. It's been a powerful learning journey for me. And a few years ago, I had the honor to receive messages through an amazing client who simply came to see me for sleep issues. These messages were given through him to me to disseminate to the world. In an effort to th follow through on my commitment to do so with a team of wonderful people helping, we have been delivering these messages via many social channels. We published a book 
called Chronicles of Hope and created a website where you can access everything associated. These messages of global awareness are so timely with what is going on in our world today, especially with this COVID-19 disease pandemic. I would like to take this opportunity to share some of the messages with you, starting with the preface of the book, Chronicles of Hope, The Onquietus. Preface Our mission is to save humanity for our children and our children's children. Team Hope What would you do? if asked to take on a mission to help save humanity from imminent destruction. If it was within your power, would you help? And in so doing, what if you would find yourself with information that questioned and challenged all that you knew? What if you found yourself conversing with those who could provide answers to help shift this world toward a more positive direction? What if the information was confusing, fascinating, overwhelming, and divergent from anything you could imagine? What if the medium from which the directives originate was otherworldly, incomparable, mysterious, and majestic? What would you do? We are experiencing worldwide and incredible magnitudes of intense and escalating levels of violence and crime, poverty and hunger, government upheaval, terrorism and war, public health issues, destructive storms and natural disasters, animal extinctions and scandals of all types, sexual, corporate, political and financial. Change is difficult for humans. We only drive change when our pain is deep, untenable, and unbearable. Is humanity reaching this point of pain? Or are we already there? Humans are experiencing fading hope. Many have lost it altogether. Others have simply stopped trying. Before hope falls into an irretrievable space, we need to look forward with focused intention and confidence, use our creativity to stimulate positive thought, and feel that what we create matters. The outcome? Hope raises vibrational energy, and the more hope we have, the higher the energy rises, and the more improved our end results. We can bear witness to this downward spiral of hate blame, greed, fear, and death? Or can we, as individuals, along with our collective cultures, reverse the spiral into a hopeful, promising, and protected place? The pervasive, enthralling, and significant knowledge and wisdom illuminated in this book has the power that could transfigure our civilization. The words and messages in this compilation will cause some to deny and ridicule it. Some will be sad, angry, or lost and rudderless. The goal is to see, hear, and act on these missives, to shift your energy, and to come together to reverse the downward spiral of negativity plaguing ourselves, our community, and our world. The intention of Chronicles of Hope is to encourage positive change in our society by stimulating new thoughts about our existence and making us aware of how we relate to each other, our planet, and the universe itself. This body of work provides insight into unanswered scientific questions, historic mysteries, and spiritual inquiries. Welcome this information as an offer of hope to everyone on earth. You are summoned to embark on a mesmerizing journey that will cause you to pause, reflect, and hopefully change the way you look at life and the people around you. Chronicles of Hope invites you to assist in this mission to save our precious planet and the life that lives in, on, and around her. Hope 
is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tunes without the words and never stops at all. That's by Emily Dickinson. These wise ones commuted this wake-up call was coming. They let us know and gave us insight as what we could do to shift the world toward a more positive, hopeful direction for humanity. Their messages were very clear, and we have detailed them in the Chronicles of Hope book series. I'll continue to share them with you via this radio show and other social avenues. That is my commitment to you. If you're interested in purchasing the book, you're welcome to do so. You can find it on the website, connections on the website, loisherman.com, or actually go to chroniclesofhope.net. You'll also find a great audio book. I'm just reading here, but there is a fabulous audio book that my dear friend Andrew Perali, he recorded with me, and it's very, very powerful. You truly get to experience the sessions as if you are right there firsthand. Truly, I'm a very private person. I love what I do to help people shift the negativity in their life, and I really have little interest in being in the spotlight. However, I am dedicated and committed to share these messages that were given to me. I was blessed to receive even more channeled messages from the spirits of Gaia, our Mother Earth, the Universe, Jesus, several archangels, and many others. There are others who are receiving similar messages. To many, it is very clear why this virus is taking over our world right now. We've been going down the path of negativity for some time with all the anger, greed, and hate. We must change our perspective of each other and come from a place of unity and peace in order to shift this world to be more positive so that we can all heal together. This virus is shaking our foundation to cause us to take inventory and appreciate what is most important. As we learn to listen to our own hearts, instead of the noise that is so prevalent around us, we will know what is truth. Let us come together as one in humanity to help each other through this crisis, and I'm sure there will be more to come. One of the things that I've noticed on Facebook, there are some fabulous people posting very inspirational thoughts, messages that will help everybody. Those of you who are not friends with me on Facebook, please like my Lois Herman Success Coach page because I'm regularly sharing positive messages. You can also like the Chronicles of Hope, the messages page, where we are sharing more insights we're putting out all of the messages in the book. And one of the posts that I thought was very poignant, very special, was this. And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their shadows. And the people began to think differently, and the people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger had passed, and the people joined together again. They grieved their losses, and the people joined. They made new choices, and dreamed new images, and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully, as they had been healed. Several of the messages that I got were from the universe, this is the sessions that I'm working on right now for book two. I'll share some of them with you because they're very, very timely. Mother Gaia said this, If humans were more aware of their own interconnectedness with everything else 
and realized that every action they take has consequences far beyond those they could even foresee and modified their actions to allow for the consequences they can foresee, that would be enough to help save our world. If we just paid closer attention to the actions we take with one another and with our wonderful earth, we can make a difference in our own way. Another thing she said that is extremely timely the tampering with nature using genetics is an example of things with unforeseen consequences. There are things that are going to begin to occur related to genetic modification that humans have done for which they had no foresight, no concept that this was going to happen. And it is not something that Gaia is going to do deliberately. It is a natural consequence of what humans are doing, and it will hurt them. We need to be more sensitive, more aware that our actions have consequences that we may not see directly. We must do the honorable thing even if we do not credit, get credit for it, if we live with honesty and integrity. Many people are talking about this virus, this bug. Did it come from a biochemical plant? Is it something that has been genetically modified and therefore we're noticing that the replication rate is exceedingly fast. This is unprecedented in our lifetime. It's also an unprecedented bug in that it affects all humans, no matter what race, what gender. It's pointing away to the fact that we are all one. This little bug is causing humanity to stop and take notice. Because as I summarize the session, the original session with Gaia was March 17, 2018, two years to the day after we, after I'm writing this passage for book two. And we are now in the midst of a global pandemic caused by the coronavirus COVID-19. This minuscule virus is demonstrating very clearly how interconnected humans are across all races, nationalities, and ethnicities worldwide. We have been brought to our knees with devastating sickness sweeping through our common human bodies. No other animals are affected by it yet. Humanity is being made acutely aware of our commonality and our vulnerability in a way that we have never experienced in modern history. Yes, people have lived through plagues, war, genocides, terrorism, hurricanes, fires, earthquakes, and more. All are tragedies that we hear of and affect some people more directly than others. In this day of international connectedness, this microscopic bug has traversed the planet affecting individuals, families, communities, and countries on a worldwide scale, which is unprecedented. Even world wars were fought among certain nations, while others went about their normal daily lives. Yes, there was indirect impact and inconvenience across nations. However, this viral bug is impacting the lives of every living human on this planet in some way. Gaia, the spirit of our planet, of Mother Earth, wishes humans could slow down the damage that we are doing and become more thoughtful of our actions. Then she could heal the wounds we have inflicted on our Earth through our carelessness and our neglect. With the COVID-19 scare shutting us down, people are being forced into quarantine to avoid contact and to block the spread of disease. By so doing, we are already seeing amazing results with the quality of our planet. China was the first country affected with thousands of deaths. Exponential numbers are still affected and many recovering. Factories have been closed and entire communities ordered to shelter in place. This lack of pollution for one month's duration of, of this massive shutdown 
has caused a dramatic increase in the air quality of China. In Italy, thousands are still suffering. Entire cities are forced to stay in their homes. Businesses shut down, cars parked. Each of these things are contributing to alleviate pollution. For the first time in decades, dolphins are swimming again in the waters of Venice. This nasty little bug has forced us into a brief pause. Mother Gaia says she can heal the damage. We just have to let her do it. I'd like you to notice how quickly Mother Nature is healing her wounds as we focus on healing ours. Another thing Mother Gaia told us is starting a beneficial trend is worth doing, even if the results are not obvious until several generations later. However, humans need to live for their own future, not for their current existence. They need to plan for their future. Things simply do not change that fast on a planetary scale. But that doesn't mean that every little bit doesn't help. Let's take this time to take inventory and change something about ourselves. Use the extra time from your commute to make healthier meals, to really talk with your family, to be present, to reach out to those in need. Many people are planting seeds for their gardens. They're taking time to do things that their frenetic world caused them to not be able to do. So as we take time, we can shift into a healthier pattern that hopefully will persist even beyond this situation. The essential practices given by the collective to elevate our way of living are eight. Because the Ancuietas are eight, they gave us everything in the forms of eight. They tell us, be positive, encourage truth, honesty, and integrity. Be optimistic, practice kindness, compassion, and encouragement for one another. Be accepting, embrace at one minute, we are all one. Accepting of forgiveness and peace of mind. Be understanding, establish discernment, discipline, and protection from negative energies. Be present, share empathy, connection, and enjoyment with others. We can't be there in person, but we can be present. We can stop and look into each other's eyes. When someone is talking, be there fully, completely. Be with nature. Cultivate mindfulness, conscientiousness, and healthy choices. For those of us who still are able to get outside and walk around our own private yards, do so. Connect with nature. Appreciate the birds, the squirrels, the chipmunks, the flowers, even the snow we had here shortly. Take time to appreciate the fresh air, all that is in nature is given to us as a gift. Use those gifts to heal your mind, your body, and your spirit. Giving thanks is important. Be grateful. Express appreciation, acknowledgement, and hope. Many people have given up on prayer. I see a lot of clients who, when I ask about their prayer or their... their uh, who they would ask for guidance. Many say, I, I don't have any religious faith. Well, I would invite you to tap into the energy of kindness. That's prayer. The energy of positive energy, sending positive thoughts, reaching out from your heart to touch another. That's forms of prayer. If you are religious, ask for help for others. Ask for help for yourself to be more peaceful, more mindful, more aware. Be humble. 
welcome awareness, assistance, and guidance. Ask for help. The guides in this collective have said that's one of the problems. People have forgotten how to ask for help from these wise ones who are ever willing to be here to help us. There are many people who have started global prayer networks. You can tap in and pray together. Sending Reiki, for those of you who don't know what Reiki is, it's an energy aligning process that comes through me. It's the universal energy of unconditional love. And I can send that to you. I have other Reiki practitioners. You don't need to be present. They can send Reiki. Sending that Reiki energy causes others to be more peaceful, more at one, more balanced, more in alignment. Taking time to meditate, to move your body, to dance, to sing, to give yourself joy and hope. A native elder said this, The elders of a community have stated, this sickness has a spirit, just like fear has a spirit. Do not fear it. Use your medicines. Boil cedar to clean the air. Make teas. Don't just make these medicines or burn them. Talk to them. Tell them what you need. Smudge your homes and pray with good energy. Pray and ask that spirit of sickness not hurt our people. They said now is a time to pray, to create a powerful, strong relationship with the water, the earth, the elements, and the medicines. A scientific fact says stress and fear lower the immune system and make you more susceptible to sickness. Go out and walk on the earth. She will ground you. This changes the spirit and the vibration of you. Gaia, our Mother Earth, loves you, and she will give you her love medicine. Give daily gratitude to her and to all our earthly family. Do it from your heart. And you are listening to Inspiring Hope with Lois Herman at WSMN 1590. And as I said, there are other people who are channeling energy. The messages that were channeled by the Onquietus and others of the Collective were fascinating and amazing. There are others that have gifts, similar gifts. One particular young woman, Yasmin Abraham, channeled the energy of the virus. And this is what she said. I opened the channel by connecting with the virus and informing it that I will be asking questions. It did not want to answer specific questions and instead offered the following words. You humans are always seeking the answers. The answers will in most cases not make a distance, not make a difference to you if you are stuck in fear. This situation is not as it may have been presented to you. This is your opportunity to see it differently. I am the biggest mirror you will receive as human and towards your planet. You as individuals and collectively have more power than you realize. Instead, you choose to listen to those that, place, that you place little trust in. They tell you what you should be doing and you listen and do without question. The world had to stand still to see the message. There is too much noise and too much speed for most of you to see the truth. You are already behaving like zombies. The question, am I man-made, is irrelevant. It is your desires to know everything and not everything needs to be known. In your need to chase detail, you have lost yourselves. I have existed in nature for centuries and become magnified and recreated by man until I became bigger than I need be. This is what is occurring now, yet it is still not the truth. 
the origin in Wuhan is systematic of reduced immune systems due to the effects of radiation. Radiation did not create me. You are pointing the finger at many places. Look at the fingers pointing back to you for answers. You are responsible for the world you create, yet you hand over your power time and again by misplacing choice. Panic buying and hoarding of supplies is a belief that there is not enough, that our world is not abundant. This comes from your own lack of self-sufficiency. You have forgotten how to be self-sufficient in means and in yourself. This has been reflected in your mental health. Your reactions in times such as this are showing your true self. Pay attention to your behaviors and ask yourself, am I showing up in a loving way? You will be tested in isolation when you spend time with loved ones. Tolerance, patience, community, creativity will be a marker of your, resili of your resilience and character. Humans keep calling the older generation the vulnerable. These people are strong and wise. Your words and actions have made them vulnerable. They are not the forgotten generation. They have much wisdom and the respect for our elders has been lost. As more and more of them become ill or worse still die, this highlights the generation that you should be valuing but yet have decided are less worthy. They require you to connect with them, to remind them that they are important. They are the calm and resilience that we are missing. The downturn in the economy is required. It will recover, and it will recover quickly. Choose wisely where you use your money and your time. I am here to make you question how you do this. It is an opportunity to reset your choices and values, and how money, another virus, controls your life. This time is no longer about big business, but instead nurturing all of us to grow and provide a more stable and balanced economy where we will thrive together. The people who employ people need to support them as best they can. As you emerge out of this, there will be a sharp increase in economic growth when humans try to regain their lives. Are you ready for this, or have you cut your losses in fear? We are meant to work together, and yet this is still being missed. The restrictions imposed on you are superficial. The restrictions put on yourself and how you thrive in this environment will be your lesson. We had lost the essence of community, love, and communication. Is my presence making you think of others? Is it encouraging you to connect and help each other? Humans are spending too much time in their heads. This is a virus in itself causing you to check out way too often. This phase is short-lived. It will pass quickly. You have overcome genocide, wars, disease, acts of terror, yet you still doubt your ability to survive and live in fear and projection. This is making you pause and think. Review who you are and what your life means. This is a worldwide jolt that needed to happen in order for the collective to wake up. You notice how similar the messages are, how very similar these messages are with the ones that have been given to us through the Anquietus and others of the collective. They tell us there is too much hate in our world too much conflict and division. All of the hatred we've been experiencing in the media between politics, racism, and more is divisive. 
let's shift that to reach out to one another with positive intention, without blame, in all sources of media. The universe tells us when individuals learn to feel what their neighbors feel, when they experience the pain they cause others, the natural desire will be to avoid inflicting pain. That is the true path to peace. So let us come to understand that though some are laid off and worried about income, others are working overtime and exhausted, let's send some positive understanding to one another. Because as we learn to share, we will come together. We will rise above this challenge. We are breaking down the barriers between individuals, which allows people to experience each other's thoughts and feelings. Coming together is the solution. That is the cure. Instead of blaming or pointing fingers, what if we truly felt another's worries and helped them through this time of crisis? Someone has to be the first to be willing to drop the barriers isolating themselves from one another. What if we were at peace with what is happening and we use this as an opportunity to make changes on a personal level, a community level, and ultimately a global level. Gaia says, it only takes a few to make a big difference. A very small snowball can turn into a very large avalanche given enough time. There are plenty of people who know these things and who speak about them, but their voices are not heard, or worse, they're shouted down by the people who know they're doing damage but doing it for profit. Realize that we now have the op opportunity to truly listen to the quietness, the stillness, to connect with one another in a place of peace and togetherness. We have an opportunity to share and many are sharing beautiful stories as this wonderful channel Yasmin Ibrahim has channeled. Very similar messages that others are getting who are tapped in to higher realms of consciousness, higher wisdom, higher s senses of community. I'd like to share with you a message that I saw, another one of these delightful messages on Facebook. When this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, a Friday night out, the taste of communication, a routine checkup, a school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, and life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, we were called to be, we hoped to be, and may we stay that way, better for each other, because of the worst. You have been listening to Inspiring Hope with Lois Herman at WSMN 1590. And I would invite you to submit questions. I will answer them next week on our show. You can submit questions to lois at loisherman.com and I'm happy to be able to answer them on the show. Meanwhile, look up, stay positive, and be the light in someone's day.